oh, 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 I like you. Nobody else can shine the way you do. In this great big world, nothing could be more true than the way I feel. I like you. When you're happy, when you're sad, when you're feeling anxious or super duper mad, if you feel a little crazy, that's okay. Let me tell you a secret. We all feel that way. Sharon, it is so good to get out of the house. You're welcome, Carson. How's your ankle feeling? It's still sore, but I'm starting to walk on it a little bit now around the house. Hopefully, by kids' church next week, we won't need to pull you in a wagon anymore. The one good thing about my sprained ankle is I haven't had to go to school all week. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm glad you have something positive that has come out of this. <laughs> Won't you have a lot of schoolwork to catch up on, though, when you go back? Oh, don't worry. My mom has already taken care of that. <laughs> she went to the school and picked up work from my teacher for me to do at home. You have a good mom, Carson. Yeah, I guess I do. But I wasn't feeling so thankful when she brought home three pages of math. Ugh! Did you get it all done? Yeah, it actually wasn't too hard. Well, should we get going on our walk? Where are we going? We are going to have a picnic at the top of the hill over there. Yes, food! Of course! I know better than to take you on a walk, Carson, and not bring food. Boys and girls, you can practice your New Testament Bible books while we take our walk to our picnic spot. John, Acts, Romans, 2, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews, and James, and 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 1, 2, 3, John, Jude, and Revelation, 1, 2, 3, John, Jude, and Revelation.
person. I'll get the food. Just a minute. This is a nice spot. Is there a reason you brought us here today, Miss Sharon? It's one of my favorite picnic spots. But I did have a reason for bringing you here, other than the fact that it's a pretty spot. Ah, I thought so. In our Bible story today, Jesus is teaching his disciples and the crowds of people following him from the top of the mountain, just like this. Wow, so there are crowds of people following Jesus now? Yep. Words, word about Jesus' miracle is spreading from people, and people are coming from all around to see him. I'm glad there aren't crowds of people following us around. Yeah, that would be exhausting. Yes, that's right. The Bible tells us that Jesus would often seek out a quiet place where he could be alone and talk to God, usually early in the morning or late at night. Like he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's right. Jesus loved all the people and knew that he was here to share the good news of God's kingdom with everyone. But he also knew it was important to spend time alone and pray to God so that he was ready to do whatever God asked him to do. Wow, Jesus was pretty amazing. Of course he's amazing. He was God. Yep, and it's pretty amazing that God himself came down to earth as human and set an example for us to follow. Is it time for food now? <laughs> yes, Carson, we can start eating while we listen to Miss Jill tell her Bible story. So, Miss Jill, are we going to hear about another miracle today? No, not today. Today we're going to learn about some very important things that Jesus taught his followers. Our story today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5. As Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, he healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. Stories about him spread and big crowds began to follow him everywhere he went. One day, seeing the large crowds that were following him, Jesus hiked to the top of a mountain and sat down with his disciples. On top of this mountain near Capernaum, Jesus gave one of the most important talks he ever gave. It has become known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught the people about what was truly important in life and gave comfort and advice. How happy are the poor and those who are sad or who have been badly treated for... Stop! Did you just say that those who are poor and sad and badly treated are happy? <laughs> yep. That's what I thought you said. But then I thought, I must not have heard you right. How can you be happy if you are poor, sad, or badly treated? Well, Jasmine, you didn't let me finish. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are happy because they know that they are God's children and that God's whole kingdom belongs to them and that God himself will comfort them. Ah, I guess that can make you happy even if you are poor or badly treated. Yeah, yeah, it can. Jesus said, how happy are those who are humble, gentle and kind, and those who try to do the right thing. For all these people will be rewarded in heaven. They will be comforted and know great joy. Those who have been merciful will receive mercy, and God will look kindly on those who have tried to keep the peace, for they are truly his children. So be glad when people are mean to you and say nasty things about you because of me, for a great reward is waiting for you in heaven. Wow! So it is okay if people say mean things about me because I believe in Jesus? Yes, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt and doesn't make us sad when people say mean things. But it helps when we remember that Jesus loves us very much and that we will get to live in heaven with him one day and that there is a very wonderful reward waiting for us in heaven for faithfully following Jesus. Wow, that does help. 
Jesus had other things to teach his disciples too. You are the light of the world, he said, and then he used a parable to explain what he meant. When people light a lamp at night, they don't hide it under a big basket that would hide its light. Ha <laughs> ha! That would be really silly! Yeah, it would. Instead, they put the light on a stand to light up the whole house. Just like that, you should let your light shine so that other people can see it and give glory to God. Jesus also said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We are the light of the world when Jesus, the light of life, lives in us. Sometimes this teaching may seem like a difficult list to follow. If we haven't accepted Jesus' forgiveness, this is a list of good things we could never do. The Pharisees tried to keep God's law perfectly and added lots of rules to try to keep themselves from sinning on the outside. But Jesus reminded them that even if we sin on the inside, we are still guilty of breaking God's law. Uh, Miss Jo, mm -hmm. what does it mean to sin on the inside? Well, have you ever got mad at someone and thought mean things about them in your head, but not said those mean things out loud? Oh, yeah, I have done that before. Well, that is sinning on the inside. Wow, no one can keep God's law perfectly. If even our bad thoughts count as sin. That's right. And that's what Jesus wanted the Pharisees to understand, that no one can keep God's law perfectly all the time, no matter how hard they try. The only way we can be perfect is through Jesus, who kept the law on the outside and inside in his heart. He did what we could not do. He lived a perfect life, and then he took our place to die for our sins. We can get to heaven if we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus. He offers salvation to everyone who trusts in him. Let's stand up now and sing a song about Jesus, the light of the world.
Miss Sharon? Good. I'm glad you liked it. Oreo cookies are my favorite. Me too. Is there any kind of cookie that you don't like, Carson? <laughs> Good point. No, I don't think so. But Oreos are definitely in my top five. What did you think of our Bible story today? It was different than a lot of the stories about Jesus. I was really kind of hoping to have another miracle story. It can be exciting to hear about the amazing things Jesus did. But he was here for more than just doing amazing things. Jesus spent a lot of time teaching people, especially his disciples. I guess if the person who can do all those amazing things wants to teach you something, you had better listen. That's right. Jesus loves everyone and would often have compassion on people. He did not like to see them suffering and in physical pain, so he would often heal them. But what Jesus wanted to do even more was to heal people on the inside. What does that mean? Well, remember the story of the paralyzed man where Jesus not only healed his leg and made him walk again, but he also forgave his sins? Oh yeah, I remember that. The Pharisees did not like that. That's right. Jesus has come to forgive our sins, to make our spirit alive again. This is what it means to heal on the inside. He has come to save us, to give us eternal life. It doesn't matter if Jesus heals people on the outside, but they remain dead on the inside. Jesus has come to give us eternal life. Yes! He forgives our sins. He makes our friendship with God bright again. He gives us new life and life eternal. And that's what it means to be born again. Yes, that's right. You two are really starting to understand all this. I think it's time to start packing everything up. Already? Yes, I promised your mom I wouldn't keep you out too long. But I'll take you out again soon. Okay. Boys and girls, while we're packing up, we can, you can go check on Miss Jill and see how our plans are coming along. Boys and girls, I guess you're ready for memory verse time. I'm just giving these plants a little bit of water. Miss Sharon, but don't worry, I'm trying not to drown them. Miss Sharon says they need just a little bit of water. Miss Sharon is off on a picnic with Carson and Jasper. Carson really needed to get out of the house. So I guess it's just me for memory verse time today. I can help you, Miss Jill. Oh, Trevor, you scared me. I didn't see you there. That would be great. How are the plants coming along? Um, well, these two are looking pretty good. And this one finally has something growing in it. And, well, this one has lots growing, but it doesn't look like my beans or my corn. Um, I think those are weeds. Oh, weeds? How did weeds get in there? I already told the boys and girls I'm not a very good gardener, but I guess I w w we'll have to keep watching and see what happens. Yep, I can see you've been watering them. That's good. Yes, at least I've been remembering to do that. So, are we still working on First, first John 4.14 uh, today? Yes, today is our last day for this memory verse. But it is still May. Don't we usually have to do a memory verse for a whole month? Yes, but there are five Sundays in May, and this is just a short verse. So we thought three weeks would be plenty for us to learn it. Let's review our whole verse with the boys and girls. Ready, Trevor? Ready. Boys and girls, see if you can remember the verse and do the actions with us. 1 John 4:14, 4, And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the savior of the world. So far, we have learned that John and the disciples were eyewitnesses to Jesus. They have seen and can testify that Jesus is the son of God and that he has come to be the savior of the world. Trevor, what do you think the word savior means? Hmm. 
Well, I'm guessing to be a savior means that you have come to save someone from something. That's right. Um, let's think of some examples. Hmm. Miss Sharon saved you one time from falling off a ladder when you were trying to hang that picture on the wall all by yourself. Oh yeah, you heard about that one, eh? <laughs> yep. I was also saved from drowning one time when I was a young child. We were camping, and my brother and I were playing on a cliff a few feet above a lake. I fell in, and my dad had to jump off a thirty-foot cliff with all his clothes on to save me and pull me out of the water. Whoa, that must have been scary. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was so glad my dad was there. He was definitely my savior that day. Okay, so we know that Jesus is the savior of the world. He is saving the world, but what is he saving the world from? Yes, that is the question. Why does the world need saving? There must be something really wrong. But it's not like the world is drowning. Well, actually, it kind of is. Well, I mean, not drowning in water like I was, or like these plants are if I water them too much. But the world is drowning in sin. Sin is when we do things our way instead of God's way. That's right. God has an enemy. His enemy is Satan. Yes, and Satan does not want us to follow God. Satan tries to trick us and tempt us away from listening to God, just like he did with Adam and Eve in the gar garden. Yeah, and because Adam and Eve ate from the tree in the garden that they were not supposed to eat from, sin came into the world, and that is very bad. Yes, Paul says in the book of Romans that all of creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth. I have given birth to two children, and let me tell you, it hurts. All of creation is groaning in pain. Something is definitely wrong. Yeah, it definitely is. And Jesus has come to save us, to save all of creation from the effects of sin. He is making. Everything new. He has come to make everything right, to forgive us for our sins and give us new life for everyone who believes in Him. Let's stand up now and practice our memory verse song.
Well, I think we're ready to go. That was an awesome spot for a picnic. Yeah, thanks again for taking me. It was so nice to get outside. You're welcome. Now that the weather is nice, we'll have to do some more picnics. Yes, and hopefully you won't have to pull me in a wagon next time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, let's pray before we say goodbye. Three, two, one, pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to be Savior of the world. Thank you for sending him to teach us so many things, to show us how to live, and to die for us so that our sins could be forgiven. If there are any boys and girls watching today who have not received forgiveness and new life from you, God, I pray that you would work in their hearts, that today they would make that choice to follow you. Jesus, help us to be your faithful followers and share your love and joy with everyone. Amen. Bye, Bye. everyone. Shine the way